Hi, this is Barry with Barry's Workshop. In this video, I'll show you how I assembled this carbide roughing gouge. This is based on a kit that I got from Rockler. The kit includes the bar, a ferrule, and two cutters for about the price of a single cutter. It was really too good of a deal to pass up. I just had to make the handle and put it all together. To make the handle, I laminated some scraps. This is a pallet wood, and I'm using that as the blank. And I've actually been practicing with the skew chisel, so I used the skew chisel, but a uh, spindle roughing gouge would have worked just fine in this situation. And working on a spindle of this length reminds me that I need to get a longer rest. Now that I've got this spindle turned to a round shape, I'm going to put it in the chuck so that I can drill for the bar. The bar is half inch, so, and I'm using a half inch bit here. In my experience making handles, the trickiest part seems to be making the recess for the ferrule. Uh, the mistake I keep making over and over again is to, I think I'm sneaking up on it and I ended up overcutting it so the ferrule ends up loose on there. So I was really careful when I made this one to uh, sneak up on it. And I'm, what I'm doing is, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a slight taper. And once I get the ferrule to go on there, I put it on there and twist it. And then that burnishing mark will tell me that it's the right depth. I mean, you could use calipers to measure it, but I, I think this is the best way I found so far to get it nice and snug and, and to hold on there, but without being too tight. The, so the ferrule's on there snugly, but with no adhesive to hold it in place. Uh, and this allows the ferrule to support the wood in the live center while I work on this taper to blend the wood into the ferrule and make a nice transition. And once I've got that transition, I can just turn it down to a shape that seems generally comfortable in the hand. And I've decided to make basically two positions for the hand here. One if you're holding it more to the, the bottom end and then also if you want to choke up on it a little bit. Now these little grooves I'm cutting, they're not only a, a decorative piece, but I find that having something with a little bit of texture there for my fingers uh, just helps the feel of the tool. Um, so they're kind of not just, uh, not just ornamental, but also functional. And I flipped around the spindle and removed the portion that was in the chuck. And the normal course of sanding through the grits. And this finish is a homemade finish that I made. It's a combination of boiled linseed oil and just a little bit of varnish. And now it's time to assemble the tool. This is some five minute epoxy to hold the ferrule. And since I drilled a half inch hole and this is a half inch shaft, this is really quite snug and there are a couple little barbs on there. I probably could have gotten away without using any adhesive at all, but I went ahead and put the epoxy in there just for good measure. And now that the handle is assembled, I go ahead and install the cutter. Now here I'm using some blue Loctite and this is the serviceable kind. It's really just to hold the screw in place to keep it from vibrating loose. You don't want to use the red kind, you may never get it off. I hope I don't regret using this at all. Since they've marketed this as a roughing gouge, I figure that should be the first test. This is just a piece of two before that I ripped down to inch and a half by inch and a half. And I've deliberately mounted it a little bit loose and so in case the tool grabs, which it will here in just a second, you'll see the piece stop. I want it to spin on the centers rather than go flying, so that's just me learning the technique with the new tool. Now this did a good job of turning down the square piece into a cylinder, but it was a little rough. So here I'm coming in as slowly and, and carefully as I can to try to see if I can get it to, to get a smoother surface, just to see what the tool will do. And you can see even though I was pretty careful and pretty smooth about it, it's just still very rough. I mean, this is some kind of uh, fur or some you know, soft wood, but it's still very rough. Uh, as a comparison, I came in here with a skew chisel and it wasn't even particularly sharp. I, I don't know if this is a fair comparison, but you can see that the same piece of wood is a lot smoother with the skew chisel. 
And that's just a trade-off. It's a roughing gouge. It's not a smoothing tool. The surface that I see from this carbide roughing gouge is more like what you might see from a scraper, whereas the surface from the skew chisel is more like a cutting action and therefore a lot smoother. These are clearly different tools and they each have a different use in the woodturner's toolkit. So I hope you found this video useful. I'd appreciate it if you would like, comment, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.